In production, we don't want to have any of these errors or exceptions being displayed to the user, but we do need to report these errors and other information somewhere. What we want here is logging. The idea of logging is very similar to how most errors work. Most general logging systems have common levels like debug, info, notice, warning, error, and emergency. PSR3 was developed to standardize the interfaces for basic logging interactions. By itself, PSR3 is just a set of rules and interfaces, so we need to use an actual logging system that implements PSR3. One great logging system is called Monolog. So, first things first, let's install Monolog via Composer. We can use our console to type Composer require Monolog slash Monolog. When we're asked for a version, we can use tilde 110 to say we accept 110 or above. There, now it's installed. We won't need our console anymore in this lesson. Now we can open up index.php and take a look at how we use Monolog. This is an example of using Monolog in a fairly procedural code base. Again, this is not really representative of how your applications should look. Really, this should be split up into logical files, but it does show us how we can get Monolog to log stuff quite easily. So on line three here, we're including the Composer autoloader, which will help us load our monologue code. And down here, we're referencing the monologue logger in a use statement. This will make logger available in the global space. On line six, we're bringing another class into the global space. And this time, we're taking the browser console handler. Monologue uses the term handler to mean a class which decides how logs should be sent out to various locations. There are a lot of different handlers for sending things to lots of different places such as outputting to log files, syslog, the browser console, emails, or even hosted logging providers like Logly or New Relic. Now the various classes are available, we can instantiate our logger class. We pass a string to the constructor as a first argument, and this is the name of our logger. This can be anything you like, and it's just generally a name to help you differentiate logs, because multiple logs can be sent to the same location. The logger instance is then stored in the log variable so we can work with it further. After we've set up our logger, we then want to set up our handlers. So we use the push handler method to add in instances of various different handlers. Here, we're only adding one handler to the log, but really you can add multiple for all sorts of different things. We're only using the browser console handler, and you basically use that by creating a new instance and sending it to the handler. So, enough of me reading code. Let's have a little go and see how monolog works. So, first of all, log, everything is referenced from the log variable from here. We can run messages like error or warning. We're going to start off with some debug. Now this method is provided by the PSR3. So if you use debug and error and warning and things like that, then they are definitely always going to stay the same. The way they work is they take a string and you can say something is happening. It doesn't have to be a big scary thing. It's just letting you know that something is happening. So now if we open up our preview, we can see how this all works. We open up our browser console in Chrome, or pretty much whatever else you're using, then you'll see here in the console tab, my app, debug, something is happening. This means our messages are coming through. Let's get a little bit more adventurous. Maybe we're trying to debug something that's happening in a loop. And just to make a really simple little loop here, let's just make this loop through 10 times. We'll call it foo. We'll put that down on a new line, four spaces. Okay, let's save that. So here we can see the something is happening message appearing 10 different times. Now this may or may not be useful, but what would be even more useful is if we could pass a context to these messages. So we can make an array. This is the short array syntax if you're not familiar. And we can say it's an associative array. So pass it a name and then pass it a value. If we turn back to our preview, we can see that we've got these little carrots and these provide context. You can put as many different variables in there as you want. So, as well as debug, we have warning. And we have error. We even have critical. You'd probably want critical to send an email to the CEO or something. Like, these critical errors are only used if they're super bad. So, let's make that message appropriate. Now, if we refresh, we can see there's a whole bunch of debug information happening. There's a warning, there's an error, and there's a critical error right at the bottom here. Now, something we might want to do, depending on the type of handler we're using and how many different handlers we have, 
is we might want to limit which items go into which log. To do this, we can send an extra argument to the handlers, and this argument is a constant supplied by the logger class. I'll show you what that means. If you go to the browser console handler, and use logger to access a constant. By passing it the warning constant, we're saying we only want something that's a warning or higher. If we go back to preview and take a look. Now we've only got our warning, our error, and our critical. We only want errors and above. Excellent. And of course, and there we go. You'll want to play around with the configuration of which handlers and which reporting levels to use, but that is the beauty of a logger like this. No matter what types of handlers you use, you only need to change those handler setup lines and no other part of your application. There is an extra benefit to Monolog being PSR3 compliant. If you want to use another logger system, there is a good chance that that system is PSR3 compliant too. If they are both compliant, once again, only the setup code in your application will need to change. Your entire application can rely on the logger by passing the log instance around in service locators or by passing it into other classes manually. Knowing it will be PSR3, you don't have to worry about changing any of the methods your logs use, because they'll always be the same. That's it for this course. I hope you've learned a lot about standards and best practices. My name is Phil Sturgeon, and you can reach me at philsturgeon.uk or at philsturgeon on Twitter.